All right, everybody, time for episode three of Just Winging It, and uh, we are joined by equipment manager of the Kalamazoo Wings, Mitch McLeod. First of all, how has the hibernation been going for you guys at your apartment, and how does it feel to be the third person uh, to, to do this show right behind the coach? <laughs> I thought Marty would be next, honestly, so I was a little shocked when he texted me and asked me to do it, but um, the hibernation's going all right. Um, I live with Kyle Forte, the video coach, so... Um, we had plenty of experience on the road this year, living in cl close quarters. And, uh, <laughs> and you, got, you guys aren't sick of each other yet? No, thankfully not yet. We get along pretty well. And then uh, thankfully we don't share a bedroom like we do uh, in hotels. So <laughs> if we do get sick of each other. We can go to our separate rooms and just close the door. From a scale of one to 100, how bored are you right now? Oof. I would say a good 75. I've done a good job staying uh, somewhat active and doing different things. Um, I'm trying to learn the banjo, so that's kind of occupied a bit of time um, and definitely proved to be challenging. <laughs> I actually heard that rumor fly that you were learning the banjo, and I, I, I believed it, but I just couldn't picture it. <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead. Motivation. Uh, well, I'm a big Avid Brothers fan, so um, a lot of their songs have the banjo in it. And I was like, you know, it'd be cool if I could learn to play one of their songs one day. Um, and so, like, right before the lockdown, I went on Facebook Marketplace and found someone selling a banjo and picked it up and uh, been plucking away ever since. Does Now, does the look that we're seeing, is that does that go along with the banjo learning? Or is that a random look? Or what's what's going on there? Uh, no, well, I figured since I was in quarantine, I might as well give the mustache another go. And since we play fast and loose with the rules in November and the contest, I'll just maybe keep it until then. Um, I mean, to be fair, you didn't even get out of the first round, though. <laughs> yeah, well, I ran into a bit of a cheater, so that's what, that's what <laughs> killed me. I don't know. I don't know if I cheated. Well, I mean, Perfect. can anyone question Ben Wilson's integrity? Because we can ask him about it. Uh, I mean, we can't question Ben Wilson's integrity, <laughs> but we also can't question the results. Fan Just, voting. <laughs> there was a lot of like information provided. I wasn't sure if you uh, did the whole mustache because you knew you were going to be on the show. So if you had like a bigger beard going and you said, I'm just going to shave it for the show. I did shave yesterday because um, I was going to try and just see how the beard goes for the whole time. But it gets really thick through here and not so much over here. So I, was, I couldn't take it anymore. So I left the mustache and just called it a day. Should we just get right into the hair products question since we're on the topic of look? I mean, that, that was on the list of questions. <laughs> uh, sure. All right. Justin Taylor asks, what hair product do you use for game days? Uh, so I have a couple different ones that I choose between. Um, I have like a pomade and a paste and like a clay. And uh, I assume he asked because he's – Usually the one I ask every game day, which one I should use that day. And he usually gives me the answer. Um, so, yeah, like usually it depends on how busy the day is, but I'll usually go in before warm-ups to the like sink in the locker room and do my hair then. And so I'll ask him then. But sometimes I get a little busy and have to do it during warm-ups. Because Tracy Arnott was asking who your stylist is. So we could, in some regard, it could be Justin Taylor. Yeah, yeah, kind of. But he the provides the advice. Talents. I've never been a part of a hockey team before. Where the equipment manager has the best hair on the team. Well, I guess that's a compliment. So thank you. <laughs> absolutely, no, it's absolutely a compliment. But I, I can't think of anybody that gives you any competition this year. Uh, equipment manager wise, yeah, it's kind of no, tough. no, on our team. It's, oh, anyone on the team? Like, can you think of anybody that had had a good flow going? Tails had some pretty decent flow at the start of the year before he just often shaved his head. Um, which was incredible. I could never do that. So props to him, I suppose. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't, I mean, no one really like grew it out like long at all. So tough to say. Ben Wilson's mullet was pretty solid though. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Especially when you had it with the mustache. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was a good look. Um, first year in Kalamazoo, how do you summarize it? What was it like being a head guy, head equipment guy for the first time? at this level? Uh, I loved it, honestly. Um, I mean, I'm from Michigan, so it was, it was nice coming coming home from California. 
Uh, I'm a lot closer to home, got to see my friends and family a lot more through the season. Um, but it was nice just making like the show my own, right? Like when I was in Stockton, I was the assistant and not that I had any issues with the way Pete ran things, but you know, it's, it's a little bit nicer when you get to, you know, decide how things are going to run and like how you want to do certain things. And, um, you know, like if I wanted to come in early and sharpen skates instead of stay late and sharpen skates, like I could do that. It was just kind of up to me. Um, where before I didn't have that luxury. And like I said, not that I had any issue with the way things were done, but it was just nice to know that if something came up, I was the one who got to make that decision. What was the biggest transition from Stockton where you were an assistant to Kalamazoo where you're a head guy? Um, I think just maybe keeping sure I had everything um, stocked up throughout the season Um, because in Stockton I wasn't – uh, involved much with the ordering process of products between sticks to equipment to um, like toiletries and everything. So that was a little bit of an adjustment. And I was really lucky with the fact that um, the league is sponsored by Warrior and they're out of Warren, Michigan. So a lot of things that I would order could come in a day or two. Um, so if I ever got like really low on a certain stick or something, I could just email Ron Sanko and be like, Hey, um, can I order these sticks? And they'd be there the next day or even the day after if it was too late in the day. But, um, so I got really lucky with that. Um, but for the most part, I felt like I was pretty prepared and, uh, there's definitely some bumps and bruises along the way, but I hope I hit them well enough from the boys and the coaching staff. But, um, yeah, it was a great learning experience and I had a lot of fun doing it. We got a, a couple questions about sticks, so we might as well get right into that. Uh, right, here's my time to go get coffee then. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> Boring question. We'll take a little break. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> there's some good ones about the sticks. Live TV right here. Equipment manager going to get coffee. All right. All right, I'm back. You're That's saying something about gloves? Huh? You're saying something about gloves? <laughs> not gloves yet. We're not on that topic yet. We're talking about sticks. <laughs> All right, hit me. All right, you good? You got your coffee? Cream? Yeah, yeah, good. Just coffee black? Yeah, just coffee black like uh, Clarence and semi-pro. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Constable on Twitter says, do you have an unlimited stick budget? <laughs> no. Um, every hockey team, every professional hockey team is going to have some kind of budget. Um, obviously the higher level you go in, in leagues, um, the bigger your budget's going to be. Um, I'm very fortunate to work for an organization that if I need something, I, I don't have an issue getting it. Um, but I can't just go crazy with, with ordering things and, you know, you have to be responsible like any job. Um, but yeah, I'm really lucky that our organization doesn't really limit too much like my spending as long as I'm smart about it. Cause on that note, we got a couple of questions from Sarah and Ernie asking what your broken stick collection looks like right now. And I think it's an interesting question. Cause I don't know if we want to go down that rabbit hole and open it up to everybody, <laughs> but uh, what'd your collection look like at the end of the year? Cause the season stops so suddenly. Well, actually I think there might be one broken stick in the back right now. I think that's it because um, for the most part, I send my broken sticks to a company called Requipped. Um, we have an agreement with them that uh, I'll send them sticks, broken sticks, and then they send me um, merchandise from the stuff that they make. So they make bar- barbecue tools, um, bottle openers, um, picture frames, uh, car windshield wipers, um, ice scrapers. Um, so it's a pretty cool company and I know a lot of teams are involved with them. We were involved with them in Stockton as well. Um, so it, it's nice. Um, oftentimes I'll, the bin will get full and I just haven't got the sticks sent out. So I'll stop putting them in there and start handing them over the glass or something. Um, but yeah, right now it's, it's pretty bare cause I just sent all the sticks that I had to Requipped. We got Mitch McLeod on episode three of Just Winging It, the equipment manager for the K-Wings. You stepped into some pretty big shoes. I think it's safe to say, and Richard Krause, uh, also a shaky uh, in the hockey circles. And uh, what was that like? Do you have any good initiation <laughs> stories or any good shaky stories? Um, no, I don't really think I have any initiation stories, but I know 
Man, when I first started interviewing for the position, um, talking with Nick, he had told me, like, hey, um, you know, the last guy we had spent 15 years in the NHL, and he's the best equipment manager I've ever had as a player or as a coach, so you're stepping into a pretty big role here. <laughs> and I'm coming in as my first time as a head equipment manager in pro hockey, and I was a little nervous about that because that's, that's a lot of pressure to get right away. But um, actually, I – talked to shaky quite a bit at the start of the year um when i had gotten the job i came out to kalamazoo and and uh talked to nick and joel a little bit here in town and then went back to spring lake and uh actually had a phone conversation that was around two hours with shaky and uh he gave me a lot of information a lot of helpful hints and everything about the organization about the arena about the way things were set up um where the storage rooms were and what was in each storage room and the guy, I don't know why he writes anything down because he can remember everything. <laughs> like, yeah. It's incredible. And I was actually really lucky this year too that um, he was in Iowa with the Iowa Wild and they played in Grand Rapids. So they shot out to Kalamazoo for a day and I actually got to meet him in person and chat with him and show him some of the changes I had made to the equipment room and um, just like what I was doing in my process. So it was, it was really nice to chat with him and he's been an unbelievable resource for me. Uh, he has a question for you as well for this specific show. So I don't know if he's tuning in, but uh, maybe we'll see. Uh, he says, "What? who is your favorite player from last year? Shaky asked me who my favorite player was from last year. So I don't know if that was an inside joke. Like he wanted to know maybe who's <laughs> your favorite player to work with in your role. Interesting. Um That's so hard to choose. I liked a lot of the guys, you know, so like I don't want to – pick one guy then just get roasted all the time but um see i don't know though could it be who's maybe the tough to work with like could it be the opposite who's your favorite player like who gives you the most grief i think it could it probably could be that and i think he knows the answer to that question <laughs> um but i don't know that i'm gonna throw anyone under the bus in, in that regard um but I, I, honestly like picking someone would be really hard to do because coming into this year was, was awesome. Like the, the, the boys were great. Like I've been on some teams where it's, it's not as fun because the locker room's not as, as good as this one was. Um, but really, I, you know, I, obviously you're going to have a few headaches along the way with, with gear and skates or whatever, but um, I can't complain at all. Usually you have one or two guys that you just can't stand or are really high maintenance, but I really can't complain after this year. John Belko asks, do you get blamed for items lost in the laundry? Ooh, that's a good question, actually. Um, I'm pretty tough on the boys with that kind of stuff um, because, honestly, it's not very hard to zip a bag up because uh, our, <laughs> our guys have laundry bags that are closed with zippers. So if they don't zip a bag all the way and things are missing um, – Either Kyle, Kyle will help me out with the laundry, um, but either Kyle or myself will just put anything that's loose um, just on the bench in the change room. And um, I'll just tell the guys when they come asking for stuff like, hey, like go check the bench because <laughs> it's not that hard to zip up a bag. Um, on Facebook, Al Zantonio, I believe is how you say his name. Uh, he's asking, what does a typical game day look like for you? And I know that maybe a little bit more than most because we travel together on the road and I don't think anybody works more hours than you do. Yeah. So a typical game day, um, a home game, we'll say I'll usually get to the rink around, uh, seven, seven 15 ish. Um, and depending on the night before, um, game days are easy with, with practice jerseys cause I don't really have to wait for lines or anything. So, um, I'll usually get the, the practice jerseys out because the Fords will all be in red and the D will all be in blue. Um, so I'll get that stuff out. And then I'm sure I've got some things kicking around in the equipment room. Just depends on the day that I need to take care of, whether it's, you know, putting tucks on a new pair of skates or, um, getting some ordering done or catching up on some emails or, you know, putting stuff into my budget, whatever it is. Um, and then, during morning skate, 
as long as I don't have much to do, I have a little downtime and can and can watch um, a little bit or chat with Rooster and catch up. And um, but usually I'm I'm rolling around doing something, collecting the hangers from the jerseys and everything, tidying up the locker room, putting all the tape away. Um, then after practice, I'll obviously do the laundry. You know, I got a set of jerseys and socks to go in, then, then the laundry itself, and then the towels. Um, and then if there's another team doing a morning skate um, in Kalamazoo, then we have to make sure we have the benches and everything set up for them, water bottles, pucks, everything ready to go for them. Um, and then once they're done, we I do their laundry. And um, then the setup for the game, you have that, which is – quite a bit more than what people probably realize getting all the stuff onto the benches is a bit of a hassle. And I'm really lucky that um, John and Adam Bates are usually there to, to take that off my plate. Um, they do a really good job with that and communicate really well on what time they'll be there and everything. So the days that they get in a little late because maybe Adam's got school or basketball or whatever, um, or John's at work, um, either Kyle or I, or we'll tag team it. We'll get stuff set up to go out to the benches and uh, they'll uh, get there and then just bring it out on the cart, um, which if you've ever shown up early, you may have seen them doing that or, or myself doing that. Um, and then obviously you have the game. Uh, intermission can either be crazy busy or, or nothing to do. Um, sometimes I'll have like three sets of steel to sharpen or um, got to get a stick out and ready for somebody because – um, our saw is not in the best place where guys can't walk to it with their skates on. So a lot of times I'll cut the sticks in between periods for guys that need it. Um, but yeah, so then obviously on the bench, I'm pretty much just standing there until someone needs something or throwing a towel to someone. Um, and then after the game, if we have a game the next day, I usually like to get everybody steel flipped and, and started, um, like started sharpening that second set of steel. Um, I might not finish it that night, but a lot of times I like to get at least halfway done. Um, and then obviously in the middle of that is doing laundry for the next morning. So it's, it's a pretty busy day. I'm usually leaving there around midnight if we have a game the next night. And if we are done for the weekend, I can get out a little bit earlier than that. We could do a whole show just on your game day routine, I think. Uh, I think a lot of people who ask questions that I'm going to get to here in a second are now second-guessing themselves because they're asking about what it takes to become a stick boy, uh, what are the requirements, uh, who your mentors were. I think it all kind of relates maybe um, how many assistants you have at home, which you answered. But let's start with who your mentor was. And then second of all, if someone wanted to be a stick boy, what do they got to do? All right. Um, well, as for mentors, it's, it's really hard to narrow that down to one. Um, I kind of fell in love with with this job um, when I was doing an internship with the Stockton Thunder like five years ago or so. Um, and Corby Antropic was the equipment manager at the time. Um, and he and I are still really good friends to this day. I talked to him quite a bit. Um, and uh, so he, he was a good start for me, for sure. And then when I got the job with the Heat, um, I learned a lot from Pete Burrow, the head equipment manager there now. Um, I learned a lot, a lot from him. So I have a lot, like I have him to thank for a lot of things. And, and uh, you know, you, may, you meet a lot of great people in this industry too, and equipment managers are no exception. Um, I know all through the summer, um, I talked with Dog in Grand Rapids, um, Joey Guilmet in San Diego, um, Eric Bechtel actually helped me a lot with getting this job. Um, he's in Tucson now and he used to be the equipment manager here, I don't know, five years ago or something like that. I'm not sure on the timeline on that, but, um, you meet a lot of good people and you find that, um, most of the people in this industry are, are willing to help as I had mentioned with shaky as well. So, um, I, there's a lot of people I could thank for helping shape me into the equipment manager I am today. And, uh, uh, yeah. So then as for stick boys, um, you kind of just have to fall into the right situation at the right time. I usually look for, um, someone who's a little bit older, um, you know, maybe like high school age or even college, if it's something that, um, someone wants to get into. Um, I kind of came into this year just, 
inheriting the help that's been around, which was great because uh, Chase Miller is our locker room attendant for the visitors for the most part when he's not playing hockey himself. Um, and he was great and needs no oversight. Like he can do the job, no problem. Um, I never have to worry about anything while he's there. Um, and then, like I said before, Adam and John were, were here, uh, I think starting last year, Shaky brought them in. Um, so yeah, and then and they were obviously great too. Um, and then actually Breck and Bootland helps out a little bit too when, when we're short. Um, so um, it's been good. The uh, I, I think I'm gonna try and find one more guy for next year and we had um, a kid come in at the end of the year this year and he was gonna start coming around. But obviously as, as everyone knows, right. <laughs> the season kind of abruptly ended. I've got a couple of rapid fire ones for you. JD Barry asks, what's your favorite city in the ECHL to travel to? Uh, can I say Kansas city? <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> uh, a good friend of mine works there. So he's, he's oh, yeah? the interim coach. So he was actually my roommate for the two years in Stockton. But um, as, as for cities itself, I actually really like Cincinnati. It's, yeah. it's a larger city, but we can walk around and, find good places to eat and stuff what's uh what's a nickname everybody can call you it's from bill lentz <laughs> you can call me whatever you want just don't call me late for dinner <laughs> uh that's a good one uh meech is what we call you in hockey <laughs> so fans want to pick up on that um favorite jersey that we wore this year specialty jersey Ooh. or least favorite because <laughs> you have to see them before everybody else gets to see them that's a good question. Um, I mean, I really liked the third jerseys. I think everybody did. I don't know if that counts with the specialty jerseys. Um, I'm trying to go through my mind now and think of them all. I was pretty excited for the Bells ones. Those ones looked pretty cool. Um, I actually didn't even get to see them in person. Uh, they hadn't come in by the time the season had ended. Um I don't know. We had some really good ones, actually. The fan design one was really great. Um, I'm a big Spider-Man guy, so I liked having the Spider-Man jerseys, too. Um, I think I might have to go with the fan design one, actually, just off the top of my head. I agree. Um, what was your favorite whiteboard sign this year? Because you guys are always looking up on the video <laughs> board for those. Um. Man, I can't, I can't remember what your Star Wars one ended up being, but I remember going through and trying to find some Star Wars quotes with you. Um, obviously, I liked the one I changed it to myself. Um, that was pretty funny for me. Joel and I were waiting all game for that to come up, and we thought, because usually you do it in the second period, and it had gotten to the third period, and we're like, man, did he, did he find it, and he's just not going to do it? Like, did they cut it from the thing? And uh, but that was that was pretty good. We were pretty excited to see that. You chirped me pretty good with the mustache one, which I was pretty rattled with because I had <laughs> that, that was the funny story about that was that was December first. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, JP sign had said my mustache is still better than our equipment managers. And, and for those of you who also don't know, JP had shaved because you know it was the end of November, but he shaved on like November twenty eighth or something. Um, uh, November thirtieth, to be exact. <laughs> but he shaved before the end of the month. We'll just say that. Um, but you know, the ones that participate truly, you know, we waited till the end of the month. Um, but we had gotten back. I don't remember where we came from. Maybe wheeling or something. Um, and we had a a home game the next day. We had a, a road game on Saturday and a road a home game on Sunday. And I had gotten like three hours of sleep that night and uh, was back up and at it. And just, it was like, I talked or thought to myself before I went to bed, I was like, okay, I can either get up a little bit earlier and shave or I just go another day with the mustache. And uh, I decided to take the extra sleep and go the extra day with the mustache. And I, I thought it was so weird because you like walked into my room. And you're like, okay, cool. He still has the mustache. I'm like, That's odd. And then it all came full circle when I saw your sign in the middle of the game. But yeah, well, uh, that, that was a pretty good one too. Uh, karma, karma came back and got me a little bit. And I'm glad you finally admitted that you were the perpetrator. We all knew it. But at first I thought it was Luke Sandler because of how well it was executed. 
but the uh, the game late in the season when Luke Sandler joined the broadcast for the first time, and I was going to chirp Luke and say whose idea was it to give Luke Sandler a microphone, which is also would have been a good sign. Uh, I went to lunch, came back. Ten minutes before the puck dropped, I was going to show him the sign that I made to chirp him and said, Luke, check this out. This is awesome. And he's laughing, and I'm like, good, he must like it. And then I turned it around, and it was your message, which at first I thought was him. Like, he got me. And then he played he played dumb, where he was like, there's no – I have no idea. Any, I don't know anything about it. Is it playing dumb when you actually don't know? <laughs> we don't need to go down that road either, but it's a good point. Um, and sure enough, I looked down at the bench, and I'm like, it had to have been one of you guys. You or Forte were my two – finalists for who did it um so i figured we'd show it anyway so the 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 moral of the story is i did know i tried to play it off like i didn't but uh it was good it was well executed what was your favorite prank of the year was it that or was it the time that you told me we weren't going to wear the third jerseys after we already promoted it on social media the day of okay i did not tell you that to begin with i told mcfadden that and i thought he knew i was joking (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then uh yeah so the story goes uh mcfadden was down in my office and uh he was just like oh so we're wearing the third jersey tonight and i because i like to mess with people just like nope uh some name bars didn't come in so we're not wearing them like just made it up on the spot and then um like guys are getting dressed and like ready to go i think by the time or maybe it was before they were getting dressed but it was definitely when all the guys were at the rink for the game And I just happened to be walking by Booter's office. And he goes, I can solve this right now. Mitch, come here. And I was like, yeah, what's up? He's like, we're wearing the third jerseys, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think Mitch was just messing with McFadden. (laughs) And he was on the solo. (laughs) Yeah, when that conversation happened between you and Nick, I was on the phone with Tony to be like, what do we do now? Because we've already promoted that we're going to wear these jerseys. The fans are excited. The jerseys look awesome. I saw them earlier today. Now we're going to pull the rug out from under the whole fan base and not wear them. And so Tony calls Nick. and We conference call him in. So it's us three on the call. You get pulled into Nick's office. And he asks you front and center, is this going to happen? Uh, that was a good prank because it involved everybody. So <laughs> that I was a good prank. prank. I call it a prank, but I, I know that you uh, initially just tried to mess with McFadden. So he actually believed you and passed it up the ladder. It worked perfectly. Um, another quick one. Um, the nickname behind Bedbugs Blaney. Did you ever hear that story? Uh, kind of, I guess. So we had to get the, all the Harry Potter jerseys, which are actually really good jerseys too, now that I think about it. Um, we had to have the nicknames for players on the Harry Potter jerseys. But uh, I had to, or we as a collective, I guess, had to run all the nicknames by the league so that they would make sure they're appropriate or whatever. Um, So when we were in Allen, I was going around and and getting, asking everybody what they wanted on their jersey for their nicknames. And Blaney wouldn't give me an answer. So I, uh, I had told him we had a practice day in Allen, and I told him, I was like, hey, man, like, before you leave the ring today, I need an answer or else I'm picking it. And uh, I ended up getting busy because we had to move all of our stuff out of the, the two locker rooms and actually put everything into Alan's dressing room. Um, and so I don't know if he even looked for me or if it just slipped through the cracks or whatever. But then uh, myself, Marty, and Rooster were all at dinner that night, and we were – and I was like, man, I never got this nickname from him. So I started texting him and uh, he uh, he's like, I don't know. Who do we play? And I was like, I have no idea. And uh, so he's like, I don't know, just choose something. So I like started sending him options and they, to be fair, they weren't the most friendly options. I think the first one I sent to him was troll. Um, and then I think I sent him Danny DeVito uh, <laughs> so, so there are knocks on his height, basically. Yeah, a- angry elf was in there, and and he kept saying no, no, no. Um, and then Joel actually offered up Blanky, and he said no. Um, 
and then he gave me, <laughs> he gave me a list of five nicknames to use, and it was like Bedbug, um, Iceman, KB. I can't, I can't remember the other two off the top of my head. So of course I picked the most ridiculous one because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> then the jerseys came in and he was kind of sour about the nickname on it. He's like, Mitch, I was like, dude, look at your text. Like this was on the list you sent me. He's like, I sent that one as a joke. <laughs> I was like, how was I supposed to know that? Like you didn't tell me it was just on the list. And then the guy goes out and wins the game. Yeah. Which- and then he got the game winning goal that game. But that was the game where we scored with like 10 seconds left to yeah. go up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, um, last one about Blaney. How much does he owe you for all the sticks that he broke this year out of frustration? <laughs> <laughs> he will keep that uh, undisclosed, but yeah, okay. there, there, there was a fine at the end of the year because we'll let he, it slide because of the circumstances. Yeah. He had, uh, oh, a couple couple for sure. it was like two days in a row. Like one was in practice and one was in a game and it was just like, I, uh, I didn't give him any new sticks. I made him come ask for him. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> but earlier, earlier in the year, one of the players had broken one on purpose. So I took all of his sticks out of his, um, stick rack and just put the broken one in there just to mess with him a little bit. And then, yeah, he came and grabbed all his new ones from me, but, um, uh, you gotta be able to give it as much as you take it. That's for sure. Who's the biggest prankster in the locker room other than you? Oh man. Um, I don't know for like actual pranks. That's a good one. I know, I know Willie and tails are pretty uh, conniving. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, I, it's hard to know like with pranks. Cause I, I think a lot of them probably happen like around the room and stuff. And, and my office is kind of far away from there. Um, but I, I do hear of some and I know, those two are pretty big culprits or at least suspects at times. Um, yeah. I think, I think being around that as long as they have, they, they have some tricks up their sleeves. That's for sure. Last two quick ones, one from a fan and then I've got one for you. So this one's from Corey Bogner. He's asking, what is the deal with the smelling salts? It seems like players trade them and use different ones. Are they scented differently or what's going on there? <laughs> well, they're all ammonia scented. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, it's just, uh, guys fall into a routine. Um, like some guys want to be able to crack their own. Um, and then like Marty, usually Ganley will, I'll throw one to Ganley. Um, he'll crack it, smell it, throw it to Marty. Marty will smell it and toss it to me. And then I'll smell it and either throw it to someone over the glass or depending on who's backing up, they might want a little toot of it as well. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so like I could probably run run down the list. So Blaney will get his own um, or to start with and they share them. Um, Blaney, Sorzy, um, Ganley, Fry, uh, Thosey and Eddie will switch on and off between who starts with it. Hold uh, on. I am amazed by the calculation behind this. Like this is actually a routine. Oh yeah, yeah. You no, know, like you have memorized which player gets their own smelling salt. I thought this question was just going to be one that you just. No, <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, Farley will uh, will come up and like skate up to me as I'm walking onto the ice and and grab it. And we actually developed a little, I guess you could call it handshake, because like a lot of the times guys will come out and just like put their hands out. So I'll just high five them, even though I know they're looking for the smelling salts. So it kind of became a thing that Farley would come up, he'd put his hand out, I'd smack it, we'd fist bump after, and then I'd give him a salt. So, um, and then when Kylie plays, he gets one before he goes into the net as well. So I think that's everyone who gets one to start with. It helped for sure um, that I had to start passing him out because I don't think Rooster was allowed to anymore. Um, so I had to have my own stash and be the one to hand him out. So. My last question is probably the most talked about content piece we did this year. And that is the top 10 list of the favorite movie quotes where you appeared in it. You made a, a couple of cameos. Uh, you start in the one that was the, the one from blades of glory where you <laughs> had Michael Michaels and then you and Joel finished it off with probably the, the best impression of dumb and dumber I've ever seen with the, uh, 
totally redeem yourself. <laughs> My question, I guess, is how did you come up with the courage to bury your chest for the entire world to see? <laughs> Kudos to you for that one. And the second one is, do you have acting in your future? Is this something you want to continue with these, uh, these movie quotes? Because clearly you got a talent for it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, when you have the body of a skater, you do want to show it off. So that's a, <laughs> um, but no, like, I mean, you gotta be able to laugh at yourself. And I mean, that wasn't too egregious. So whatever, like it's just a shirt off. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, that was all Marty too. Like he was, he was unreal. I couldn't, I mean, you, you were there. I, I couldn't keep a straight face with that guy. It took me a lot of takes cause he was money and like, just the tone in his voice and like the way he was like looking at me, like I couldn't, and he had, I don't know if you guys could tell in the video, but he like blacked out a tooth. Um, <laughs> and I was just dying, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. And Marty and I have been talking a lot um, throughout the season since that happened about how we want to keep, keep doing some of those. Cause those were pretty fun to film. And um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully uh, maybe when this quarantine thing gets over, we can, we can all get together and, and film another scene or something. We might have to give you two your own show. <laughs> I wouldn't be against it. It was fun. Well, thanks for doing this. It was a lot of fun. I know we kind of surprised you a little bit by throwing you into the, the fire on the third episode just to mix it up instead of doing the, the same types of interviews. Uh, and you did an awesome job. Hope uh, you're enjoying you. your with Kyle Forte. Say hi to him for us. I will. I'm surprised he didn't make his way out here. He must still be sleeping. Oh, you know what? If he was trying to avoid the camera, he's not going to be able to much longer because we're going to get him on a show coming up too. I think that's a good idea. Keep growing out that mustache. Someday you'll get to my level. And uh, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Thanks.